All right. So um, we're going to get into this. I think people will just drift in and out um, as as they can. I appreciate you during the day. So um, <clears throat> what is this that we're doing right here? So this is um, a format that um, which is called a round table. So it's about bringing in people who I've been working with um, at different levels, different backgrounds, different circumstances. And I just wanted to bring these guys in to talk about their journeys. I think it's a really good thing for these three lads as well to be able to um, reflect on their journeys as well as helping other people as well and this week we've had um, uh, this week we've had Mar uh, Marcus in who who's obviously an incredible inspiration overcoming stage four cancer um, uh, and on Monday we spoke to Tim about how we build a strategy of building success from home um, and not allowing his career to absolutely cripple him so um, I'm going to introduce no, the guys are going to introduce themselves as they want to introduce themselves. So I'm going to start at the top. So Danny, do you just want to introduce, introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, um, and how you're working with me? Yeah, sure. So hi, everybody. Uh, I am Danny, as James very rightly said. Uh, professionally, I run a Facebook and Instagram ads agency, uh, and I work with uh, online business owners to help them to grow their business using ads. Uh Personally, I am a husband to Mandy and a dad to James and Reese, my two sons. And um, yeah, I I've known James for a while now, probably about a year, I think, when we because we've been in a, a different Italy, program together. The first one, wasn't it? Sorry, Italy, was Italy the first time? Italy you... was the first one last July, yeah. I think that was. Yeah. Um, so we're in a different program together, which is probably more business focused. Well, it's definitely more business focused than what we're doing. Yeah. Um, but I quickly saw that I wanted to talk, come into James as well because of the stuff that he does. You know, there were there were gaps. Like I think there are in, in most, with most men, there are gaps in, you know, where you are showing up, where you're not showing up. Where, you know, where, yeah, there were definitely areas of my life that I could improve. And I've always been interested in personal development, but something that has always been a bit secondary for me. I've kind of, you know, read a few books, tried to implement a few things, not maintained it. And, you know, I've definitely got better over the years, but it was time to just level up. So I am in the top 1% club, have been for a few months. So relatively new, but really, really enjoying it, really loving the experience. And, um, you know, for me, one of the key things Tell me to shut up in a minute if you want, James, <laughs> if I'm going to take I know, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Cool. But one of the key things for me was, um the SRS, you know, getting the structure routine and systems in place so that I could just be better in pretty much all aspects of life, really. And there's still a lot of work I need to do. And I'm I'm uncovering more about myself all the time. But it's really helping. And I'm, you know, I really enjoyed it. We did our first or the first event I've been to in London a few weeks ago, met some of the lads, and it was uh it was really, really good. Yep. On off to Spain next week with me. Yes, very much looking forward to that. Good. It'd be good. All right. Next, my man, Adam. Uh, Adam Simpson. Hi. Yeah, I'm Adam. I uh, I have been a software engineer for the last 25 years. So I'm a web designer at heart. So uh, I've been doing that for quite a long time. But I took a career break last September uh, to come away from that to spend some time doing stuff outside of corporate world. So I went along to one of James's seminars in Aston Villa in November and decided to to sign up for the Elite Squad program. So I've been in that for about six months now, six, seven months. Uh, I have found it's been great for my routine. Uh, I'm quite an organized person, but I've, you know, working with James, I've kind of taken this to the next level in terms of the planning Never really worked, you know, had plans for the future for the next, you know, month, six months, 12 months. Uh, and I've certainly really enjoyed that, that, that focus part of the, uh, of the system that, you know, we're, we're working towards. Uh, so at the moment, I'm learning to uh, be a day trader on the stock market. Uh, and the structure routines and systems that I'm putting in place is helping me with the learning of that. And also the personal side in terms of, health and uh kind of nutrition uh i'm get i'm in a really good good place and a good routine from you know morning times work times what i guess what i have learned is that i was a master procrastinator uh and 
after several months in the programme and a reflection when I went to Barcelona with James, it kind of highlighted that I wasn't using my time efficiently enough. Uh, and that was a really good reflection point to look back and make some changes for quarter two, which I've done really well. Good stuff. Perfect. Yep, great. And we'll come back to some of the questions on that as well. Nice one. Thanks, mate. And, uh, and then Andrew. And mute. So I'm Andrew. Um, I'm a sales manager for an engineering company. I've been doing this now for nearly 30 years. Um, worked my way up from an apprentice to, to management. Um, yeah, I, I've been with James now for over a year. I joined the five-day free course. Nothing to lose, so I thought I'd give it a go. Um, yeah, like, like what he said, read his books. Um, and I, I think for, for me personally, it, it's a real, so it's, James is as real as, as, as he possibly can be. Um, I'll get onto that in a bit. Um, for, for me personally, um, with, with my job and with my life in general, as with most people um, that I've found um, within, within the group, everybody's going through similar kinds of, of struggles. So for, for me, it's a, a question of being the best version of myself so that I can help my family, my wife, my children, my grandchildren, and uh, my colleagues. Um, so uh, I've, I've had some sort of ongoing um, troubles over the last year, which James has, has helped me realize that it's a case of do it or don't do it and move on, stop, uh, stop the pity party. And he uh, strong armed me into sign up for a 134 mile bike ride with about four weeks training. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's my journey to to, to date. You never know unless you try, right? <laughs> Very trying. <laughs> cool. All right. So listen, um, well, I've got like a range of questions, and I just thought this would be a really good reflection piece, a bit of time for you guys to take out from your busy schedules, just to reflect on your your own journeys as well. So um, I'm just going to ask some of these questions here. Remember reflecting back on the start of your journeys and knowing what you know. What on earth is that? Okay. What? <laughs> Not sure what he's trying to write there. When reflecting back uh, on the start of your journeys and knowing, I think it's meant to be what you know now, what advice would you have liked to have given you to assist the starting aspects of the journey? I'm interested to know if the panel have different aspects uh, and assume some variation in advice as we are all different. Okay, do we get the gist of that question? So basically, if you know what you know now, if you went back down to your uh, very start of your journey, what advice, I guess, would you give um let's start with danny yeah um i i like the question uh, i need to just have a think about it i mean i i'm you know in your world james i'm relatively new but yeah. i think the one thing you know there's a lot that i've learned you know one of the things that i love about the top one percent club is the accountability so we do a, a morning check-in and an afternoon or well, end of day check-in afternoon for me because that's when my day ends um because that's when the kids get home from school and you know we've recently changed the format of that and started to look more at more, you know, reflecting a bit more on, you know, rather than just ticking boxes, we're kind of talking a bit more about, you know, what we've achieved. And it's really started to make me look at myself a bit more and think about um, a, a few different aspects. And I think that's one of the things that I, you know, the, the one thing I would say to myself, if I was to go back to the beginning is prepare to be really open and honest with yourself, because I think, you know, I think I'm probably like a lot of men that you kind of almost tell yourself a story in a way and you, you sort of try and paint a picture and that can sometimes be a little bit to your detriment and downfall because you sort of, you know, maybe put yourself on a pedestal that you're not quite ready for, or you might look the other way and, you know, just be a bit too hard on yourself at times. So, you know, just being really open and honest and candid about, about things and accepting sometimes that, you know, for me, I know that I am. I'm not. A, I'm. I'm probably the opposite of a procrastinator in that I. I. I want to do all this shit all the time. I give me loads of things to do, but then I just flounder and I just get stuck because I'm. I'm like I'm trying to do too much. So one of the things I learned early on through through working with you is it is okay to set yourself a goal, 
And then once you get, you know, let's say a month into the quarter and you're looking at the goal you set for the quarter to go, hang on a minute, I need to readjust that because I'm it's just too much. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just about accepting that you're going to need to open up yourself, yeah. um, open up to yourself and also open up to others like you, James, and, and others that are in the programme. Yeah, I agree. And I think that I would call that dropping your ego. Like if you summarise, yeah. it's like literally dropping your ego. Um, <clears throat> and everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a story about why they can't show up and why they can't reach their potential and why they can't progress or move forwards. Um, and it's that story that keeps people in the same place for the rest of their lives. And that story is driven by ego a lot of the time because we because we feel almost like we're special or something's different about us, but actually we could all write a book about what we're going through and all the struggles that we're going through. Right. So it's just, it's, it, you're absolutely right. Dropping the ego, having that confrontation and changing the story for sure. Um, right. Ads. Yeah. So I think for me, things may have been slightly different because I'm not in employment and I'm, and I'm not a business owner. So like I mentioned, I was taking a career break uh, and I'm kind of working for myself. And I think on reflection, again, like I mentioned, I probably wasted a lot of time in the first three months uh, not treating my time as valuable as it is. Uh, and I didn't I didn't treat my days like a job, my nine to five hours. I didn't plan those very well. Uh, and I think I could have been a lot further forward had I protected that time uh, and yeah. planned that time a, a lot better again because I'm not in employment I'm I'm self-employed I work from home my time's my own and I think in those first few months I was looking for any excuse not to do the thing that I should have been doing the learning the personal development uh anytime there was an offer to go out for lunch I, I would I would take it or a, an appointment to you know help out with family members I would do that and, and I think I probably lost quite a bit of time doing that don't get me wrong, it was great for relationships and building and, and that kind yeah. of stuff. But in terms of progressing me forward from a uh, uh, self-employment point of view, I think I wasted a bit of time. So, yeah, I would definitely protect my time and uh, and, and treat that more like work. And, you know, I, I would be further forward now, I think. Do you think that was a habit? Do you think that was purely uh, that, like, thinking, yeah. that, thinking you've I got think... an abundance of time? It's just like, oh, I've just got I've got loads of time here. Yeah, and I think I've been uh, I've been both a business owner and employed for the last twenty years. But for the last ten years, I was uh, an employed person in the corporate environment, and I think I I was coasting for quite a while, and I could get away with doing all those things at the same time as as, as working from home and doing a job. And I think there was a transition period from leaving employment and knowing that I would get paid at the end of the month to okay I'm not you know I'm not working or earning now and but I, and I mentally I treated it the same that oh I could just do those other things and not skive off but you know shirk from home as we used to call it uh and uh yeah and and I and I realized after the first three months that yeah that can't go on and, and I could have been a lot further had I protected that time and treated it a bit more like you know I, I was the boss and, and it was much more important than it was yeah, 100%. Good learning lessons, 100%. Um, Andy? So for me, it was it was all about developing the the, a, the AM routines, um, the, the four pillars, which really help because I think as soon as you get up out of bed, that, that's it, you're, you're straight on to it. And then the, the, the sort of the habits that we developed then um, over the, the, the months to the point where we started doing the, the daily planner um, and the daily reviews, um, you, you set in yourself three priorities of the day, whereas for, for me and for most people that, that don't have to-do lists or whatever, it was getting to the, the end of the day where you don't feel like you've achieved anything. Um, and I think that that becomes the, the cycle, the, the habit, the bad habit. So it, it was all about developing the good habits and changing certain habits. I think I said to you a couple of weeks ago that with, with the, the fitness side of it, I was leaving the cycling until the end of the day, where I was getting to the end of the day, I was tired, so I wasn't putting as much effort into it. So yeah. I changed it to, to the beginning of the day 
um, and it's it's definitely made a difference. Um, but but it, it's great then to have your your early a.m., your late a.m., early p.m., late p.m. So you can block it off then, and you don't have to fill all those times. You can leave them blank but as long as you get the the main things done in the day that you want to achieve. Yeah, you can you can fill in around it. And I, and I feel like it's, it's given me me back, you know, that I've got control over what I do on a daily basis, um, especially with the, the, the weekly planning, the midweek check-ins and the things like that. Are you on target? And, and you know, and, and are you doing what you say you're going to do? Cut the bullshit, as, as, you, as you rightly uh, say every time. Cut the shit. And ironically, I taught the lads <clears throat> that system last night, actually. We introduced... The reverse engineering of a 28 day plan to the weekly plan to the to the <coughs> early a.m late a.m all of that all, all of that sequence there so you know that's a really good testament to to that <coughs> so got uh so lads if you're listening and you just joined us welcome so basically we're interviewing four lads that work with me who've who have given up their time to come in here and and, and kind of talk about their journeys so if you're watching live if you've got any questions that you would like to ask any of these guys Please stick them in the comments on the Facebook page and we'll be sure to ask them. We've got a couple of other questions that we're going to get through right here. Um, <clears throat> what made you want to work? What was the trigger to make you want to work on yourself in the first place? What was the one thing that kind of stood out? Was there anything that stood out or was it just that you had enough? Who's that to? Oh, um, let's go Danny. What was the one thing that made me want to work on myself yeah what was the was there a trigger and you just went fucking hell i keep doing the same thing over and over again was there one thing or did you just have this epiphany where you went enough is enough was there something that happened i think that's what they're trying to get at um i i've always like so i i like like dipped out of the corporate world in 20 i think it was 2013 and um like adam said you quickly realize that life is very different when you don't have the luxury of a salary coming in every single month. So I didn't really do much personal development when I was in the corporate world. I just, I, you know, I obviously did training for my job and stuff like that, but you know, I was definitely coasting before, you know, as it comes towards the end, cause I was just really disillusioned with the whole thing. So I, you know, I, I realized after a few months that I needed to start working on myself, but in, in a completely unstructured way, might watch a, video about something might read a book when i met you in italy and you stood up and you did something around srs i think it's like structure self mastery i did self mastery thing didn't we it was self mastery sorry yeah uh, which i'm going through at the moment again you know the the new sprint awesome. you did yeah um and i saw that and i was like this guy knows his shit and yeah. i am in the same room as him and I'm going to be in the same room as him again. That was the catalyst for me because I could tell that you were, you know, I think I, I am quite wordy, but I think if there's one thing for me, it's accountability. Like having somebody that can hold you to account and go, this is what you need to do. Yeah. You do it. Have you done it? Good. Here's the next thing. You know, that's, that's just the way that my mind is programmed and it works really, really well. So yeah, kind of a bit of a, um, a wordy answer but i think the accountability that you provide I, I i can see the difference in the last three four months compared to you know all of the little bits of personal development i hate doing that i can't believe i just did but all the little bits of personal development i've done over the last few years it's just a different yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's we all need it though don't we so like every single one of us need it like it stems down all the way from the kids right so like the kids if they didn't have accountability you imagine what they get up to if we didn't hold them accountable mm -hmm. i think that's um that you know for us in our other program we've got we both got the same mentor that holds us accountable you know you hold me accountable when we're getting to the ads and going i need this this is deadline so it just up so it sharpens it sharpens the sword i think is the most important thing yeah. um ads oh sorry yeah ads yeah very, very similar i mean i think i'd already like i said I'm, i'd taken the leap from corporate world about a month or six weeks before I, I joined the program and i felt like it was time for me to invest in me so i have been invested in when i was in corporate for you know training and various things you know 
uh, in my career, but I'd never really spent money on myself to develop myself. Uh, and also leaving that world, I felt like I wanted to be around like-minded individuals. I wanted that connection with a group of people. I wanted the accountability and all of those things kind of, you know, are, are here and have yeah. helped me, especially with working on my own at home. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's good to bounce ideas off other people and, you know, uh, and, and get, uh, be able to answer questions for other people as well as they, as they come into the group. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, all of those things, accountability, the community uh, and like-minded people really. So like what's interesting and it like a lot of what you're talking about is off the back of what I spoke about because we introduced the elite, the, the remember the mission 90 last night, the blueprint. And I was talking about all the reasons why people don't invest. What were some of your concerns? Like when you were thinking about investing, what were, were there any? Uh, the cost, it, you know, it, it, it is a thing. Uh, I think, you me personally i react better and involve myself better when i've got skin in the game so there are lots of free things out there and lots of people you can follow and get tidbits of advice from here there and everywhere and i think i probably was following you for about a year before before i i, I joined up yeah. uh, but life gets in the way you know you're at work you're a parent you do these other things so when some of the you know the five days or the three day courses come around I did some of those but I wasn't able to attend all of them and I felt like I was dipping in and out and I've and and now investing in myself and being part of the squad I'm kind of felt like I was all in and yeah. when I had skin in the game things changed for me because it wasn't a thing that oh, I could just dip in and out and I'll, t I'll take it or leave it I'm I'm wholly in and I I yeah. think that's what changed for me when I started to invest and, you know. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm the same. Like I've done free stuff and you're just not as connected to it. You, they, they, well, the, the numbers speak volumes, don't they? For like 280 people join the five day and we're down to about 50 to 60 people still left engaging, which is mad. Like it's crazy in, in that respect when you lose the people. And um even if you just charge the pound, it's just like that skin in the game and you're, you're home or fiver, you know, a pound a day, your whole mentality changes about the, the experience, doesn't it? So yeah. interesting. Good one. Um, Andy, what was kind of like the trigger for you to go, man, I'm, I'm done. I've had enough. I need to sort this out. So um, within my job, um, it's quite, quite stressful. Normally around about Christmas time. So in October, November, Start to feel the pressure again on top of me drinking more, exercising less, getting to sort of Christmas time absolutely burned out. Um, this despair almost thing one year it got to the point where I had to have a few weeks off on the run up to Christmas, and it just got to the point where I'm I'm I was sick of it every single year, and and, and a lot of it, and you know we've spoke about this over the last year, a lot of it was down to the fact that. I had no daily planning. I had no monthly or quarterly or any any sort of planning whatsoever. Um, yeah. No, no routines, and so it was it was just all all up in the air. So, so for me, it was just like I said earlier, is 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 grabbing grabbing life by the balls and 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 sort of saying, right, I'm going to be in control of 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 the outcomes um, of whatever it is that that I want to achieve. Um, I think. With 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 yourself, you you sort of go right. Okay, what what is, what do you want to do that you're not currently doing? Just do it, and and you know, as I said with with the bike ride, it's a case of I'm gonna keep on ramming it home every single time we talk. Is that just just do it then? Just just do it. And, and let's talk I about did. the reasons that you didn't do that bike ride. Because <laughs> I think it's interesting, right? So why did you decide that you didn't want to do a like an event? Um, just my age, I suppose. I I looked I looked at when I did it the last time, and it was two thousand seventeen. Um, and I'm I'm, you know, I'm close. I I was well, I was forty then. I'm I'm closer to fifty now, and it's 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 the age and it's the the fitness levels were uh, were not as good as what they were, you know, seven years ago. But I think one of the things that you've taught us, and one of the great things from reading your book, is that. 
is that 1%. As long as you're 1% better today than what you were yesterday and you just keep on, it's just that 1% every single day rather than, and I spoke to a friend about this on, on Sunday when we were out doing a 100 mile bike ride. Um, and he said that the problem is you're thinking you're up there fitness wise where you're down there and you're trying to you're trying to exercise to the point where you you're just not capable yeah so so again it's all about the ego isn't it and i know again I was you gonna say, about, you're, okay, it's the ego right you know you know that with me you know you know with me it, it's it's all up there and, and, and i i do know it but when somebody else tells you or yeah. says to you you're like oh, yeah you, you're right you're 100 you're percent right so the reason that you didn't sign up and for like the, the guys watching is that your expectations are here. Yeah. Okay. This is where you think you should be, but your conditioning is here. And yeah. because, because you're not there, you go, oh, there's no point in me doing it. When actually, yeah. and, and it's not about, it's not about doing the race. It's about the process, isn't it? This is what I said to you, the whole process to get there, the overcoming the fear is the thing that develops you. So, and, and the reason so many people get hung up on fear is because they don't confront it enough. They don't do enough where they're in that position. Whereas if we chase more of life, we become used to fear and actually to the point where actually it becomes part of everyday life because we do things and we challenge ourselves and we overcome the process and we build character. And then fear doesn't become an option. Like initially it does. You're like, oh my God, but then you're over it. It doesn't become a big deal, right? Um, so yeah. Get the fuck on with your bike ride. Yeah, well, it's no longer a big deal now. I had the pack through yesterday, so I've got my I've got my, my ride number. I've got yeah, got, I've got it all. So but you know you can do it. You know oh, you can definitely do it. Miles. You're, it's only another thirty four. You could pretty much <laughs> pretty much roll yeah. that down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> it is it is literally all downhill. So that's yeah. that's not the end of the world. Okay, so next question is: How do you deal with overwhelm now versus? before you started working on yourself. Um, so Danny, do you, we're kind of going around in this loop, so let's keep that loop going. So Danny, so how did you deal with overwhelm or overthinking before you start working on yourself and how do you deal with it now? Overthinking. Um, yeah. Overthinking, I need to have a think about that. <laughs> uh, I, I used to overthink a lot because, and I think the reason for that was because I just used to give myself too much to think about. Um, sort of referring back to what I was doing earlier where I couldn't really see the wood for the trees because it was like there's a million things going on like plates spinning all over the place and you know just struggling to keep up not just with the business but you know it bleeding over into the personal side of life as well um, but now the way that you've helped with the goal setting stuff has made a massive difference for me in that respect because I just chunk it down and I make sure it's manageable. I add a little bit more in just to make sure I'm pushing myself enough and not just coasting. Um, but you talked about reverse engineering um, and, you know, we set quarterly goals and then we break them down into monthlies and then weeklies and then we go down to daily. That just has helped me massively just because it gives me that discipline, that structure that I can manage with, you know, we set ourselves, I set myself normally six things a day that I want to achieve, three personal, three business. And as long as I achieve those, I know I'm on the right track because it's all been mapped out. Um, so I don't know if that really answers the question about overthinking. What do you do now? How do you, so if you, if, if you overthink, like, so do you remember when we was on a call with Phil and I was like, fuck you now, like, and yeah. you were like, like crumbling right in front of me. I was like, and you were overthinking. Can you remember like the things that we spoke about in terms of when you're overthinking, you get into that process and think, oh my God, I'm just overthinking here. How do you now cope with that? Because you can't ever stop overthinking. I think that's the most important thing. Like you, you could be the best performer on the planet. Okay. Best business owner or best in your career. You could be the most organized, but overthinking is always uh, a common daily occurrence. It's just, how do you deal with that now? What are the things that you, what are the tools that you now know to help you? I, th I you know, I, I think in that situation, it was a case of just stepping back, taking some time, um it, you know in that specific situation i remember i just had a really tricky conversation with somebody in my team and then i went in went into a call and i wasn't prepared um and that 
caused me to flounder a little bit when I was asked questions about stuff that I, I wasn't even ready for, you know, I hadn't even yeah. thought about. Yeah. So it's just about taking a step back um, and just being a little bit more analytical, a little bit more kind to myself as well. Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm just trying to think back to the conversation that we had. I've had I think a it's more like, it's it's more so like when, so when Danny like had the, had a moment where it was just quite unexpected, so in terms of, I guess, emotional connection, it just wasn't there because you were thinking about something else. And it, again, it's like the filing system, isn't it? It's like one thing after the other that just pile up. And that's overthinking is that if you think about, you know, your in-tray and on your in-tray just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And when we don't deal with those things. So the biggest thing for me is perspective in terms of overthinking. Whenever you have what I think what you're saying there, Danny, is when you have all of these things, when you step back, you put perspective on everything and let go. So it could literally be a case of walking around the block a couple of times to just like put perspective on everything that's happening. What are all these things that I'm thinking about? Make sense of them logically. And that's where the self-regulation comes in when you self-master yourself. And that's a lot of stuff that we did in the course, but it's recognizing that actually you are no good keep staying in the same place, trying to work through it because you're constantly overanalyzing, you're overthinking, you're going to the worst case scenario. When you get up and you move around, your brain, the blood flows to your brain, it's chemicals, it's science. And then suddenly you start walking and you start making sense of everything. You come back and you've got more certainty and clarity. Yeah, yeah. And I, think, and I said to you, go away and brain dump. Like brain dump everything that's going on in your head, get it all out. It's like being sick. It's like having a tummy bug and go, right, <laughs> I'm going to be sick. You're almost like being sick in your brain. It's like, fuck, like I need to get this out of my brain because it's disrupting my flow and it's just having those little stoppers that help I think for sure yeah yeah definitely and I, I think as well you know one of the I think one of the biggest things that I've learned from you if I was just to choose like one thing is go for a 4k walk in the morning first thing yeah, yeah. Because, because that in itself just helps you to regulate because you yeah. you know you follow a process and you um you just start the day on the right foot yeah yeah, hundred um, percent. Right, ads. Do you have anything that you do in specific, like in terms of how did you over used to deal with overthinking versus kind of like now? Uh, I I don't think I'm too much of an overthinker. I think I'm. You would probably say I'm. What What do you say? I've got a perfect mentality. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very I'm very analytical. I do a lot of research about a lot of things and probably too much. And well, I just want to put some context here, right? When Adam joined, there must have been at least 20 questions. I've never known anyone ask me so many questions about a program. And that, I think that's how I like, and, and I don't mean literally, it's why I fell in love with Adam as a client because I just thought, oh, I love the methodicalness. And actually, Adam, I asked Adam to use that to critique our onboarding process to make it better and that's what i literally loved i was like this is brilliant I and i love it and i love the thought process and that to me was like has to be perfect for him to, to take make the commitment yeah uh, i guess i've learned to brain dump as you mentioned journal uh i use a journal now every day I find it helps me to get clarity for the coming day to analyze what I've done today and at the end of my current day plan out for tomorrow. So yeah. I'm not going into my evening time, my family time and the you know the hours of the morning where you wake up and you you have things on your mind. If I've got all of that and I've brain dumped that stuff out at the end of each day and I have a clear plan uh, for what's going to happen tomorrow I tend to find that I'm not distracted in the evenings when it's family time uh, yeah. I sleep better uh, and I wake up with a clear plan of, of what to do and then rinse and repeat and I, and I just do that daily so uh, I think that that helps me get you know getting it all out of my head going for a walk helps if you know particularly recently when I've started live trading if if the trades don't go my way I can waste an afternoon being very frustrated and making silly mistakes, yeah. or I can just move away from the laptop, go out for, for 20 minutes, clear my head and come back with clarity. So yeah. So journaling brain, you know, brain dumping onto, onto yeah. sheets of paper and uh, yeah. And going out to, you know, for a walk help helps me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Love that. And did you do anything different from the guys or is it pretty much the same? 
it's, it's pretty much the same, the, the sort of going for walks, clean your head, thinking about things, making sense of it, and, and the journaling. Um, yeah. you, you've done a few questions a, few, a couple of weeks ago, and, and part of it, you know, is to, you know, if something is on my mind, is there something I can do about it? Can I change the outcome? Does it directly affect me? And if, if, if it's no, then just move on. Yeah. Think about it. Maybe wallow in it for for a short space of time. Give yourself time to, if it's something, but but move on, get past it as quickly as possible. So, uh, one of the guys has asked a question, and I'm not going to answer it. I'm going to get you guys to. So I hope you don't fuck up here. What are the four pillars that was just mentioned to achieve in the morning? So, what are the four morning pillars? Any volunteers? Active. Yeah, it's my mind's automatic on my on my journal. So every time it comes up, and so it's it's it's, it's um gratitude. Yeah, mindset. mindset. Yeah, and clarity. Clarity. Boom. Clarity. Yeah. Oh, I was fucking sweating then because I was thinking like, <laughs> sure, he must know what it is. <laughs> So in terms, in the morning routine, we do something that is active. We do something that improves our mindset or puts it in a positive frame of mind. Um, we have clarity about where our time, energy and focus is going. And then we feel gratitude about like anchoring our life. OK, um, right. Some more questions coming through. Uh, Dig it, me. Get out of your head. Gents, any nuggets for setting and, and maintaining boundaries in a personal life perspective? Do we think we need more context on that? Yeah, maybe a little. What... Yeah, Sean, give me a little bit more context. That's quite generalised. In today's world where you are bombarded with social media, telling you you're not good enough unless you're a millionaire or running ultras every day, what yardstick are you holding yourself accountable to? Because in reality, um, we aren't all the same. I hope that makes sense. I've, I've, deleted, I've deleted social media. Um, I got sick to the back teeth of 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 reading these and 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 seeing those those posts. The only thing, the only yardstick I use is what I want and what I want to achieve, uh, or, or what you push me to achieve. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And I think like with uh, I think it's a good point that Tom's mentioned there is like I think the thing that we do fight often is social media um, and the comparisons of other people. You know, I think that is a, that's a huge note. And I think part of the self mastery is actually, uh, I was talking to some of the guys who were on the backstage pass about be this being your journey and your mission and your direction. And that's you, you and, and learning to build yourself up against that version of you not like fucking Barry who shows up in his BMW at every fucking school yeah. playground. Like, yeah. can, I, can I just add to that as well, JB? That and 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 this is this is God's honest. I I as I I listen to podcasts every morning, like mindset for the for the mindset thing. I started listening to this one guy, and it was all about helping the mindset. Then it all became about the commercial sort of corporate side where he was trying to sell his um sort of training programs and things like that and 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 it became quite it became more about that than the actual trying trying to help people yeah. like like trying to get you to it was almost like a pyramid scheme if you know what i mean oh, yeah. Yeah. where 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 with with yourself it's the the the, the sort of the 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 morning shows you do, it, it you know it, it's it's about guys. If you want to do this, drop the bullshit. You know this is that this is you, and and obviously with the books and things like that. Then these courses, like the day courses down Bexhill and where have you, they they're they're, uh, they're eye opening. Yeah, a hundred percent, definitely. Yeah, I'm I'm very much with the mindset. You either want to you either want to sort your shit out or you don't. And, yeah. And if you don't, yeah. You keep doing what you're doing like at the end of the day you know it, it's it's lads like you it's lads that make that commitment it, it's very difficult to try and explain to people and you can listen to all of the sales techniques and all of the bullshit as you know as a salesman yourself but actually ultimately this is what we do if you like what we do and you want to change come and do it if you don't keep living keep living the fucking life that you're living and, and that's I basically think, i think one of the things as well jb it, like just to build on what you were saying about how you know you're taking control of your own shit right 
and you start to realize that that's what you've got to do you know social media noise there's a couple of ways to first of all block it out which is to make sure you're following the right people um mm-hmm. and then also to have discipline around when you're on and not on your phone or yeah. you know looking at social media but you know i spoke i think before we actually started recording I, you know we were just asking about my holiday so i just come back from a holiday and i have never felt so energized and excited about what i'm doing and i used to look all the time at and I, I'm on I'm on people's email. Like if I think about what I do as somebody that runs a Facebook ads agency, I'm on the email list of loads of people that run Facebook ads agencies. And some of them have been doing it for longer than me. Some of them not. Some of them are further ahead. Some of them do different shit, right? And I used to look at them all the time and go, oh, maybe I should try that. Or maybe I should try that. But now I don't need to because I know that I've got the plan. I know what I'm doing. I know where it's going to take me. And like every day this, every day this week, I've woken up thinking, right, fucking okay, no, hell, let's go. Let's, let's take the next steps towards the big plan. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's really important. Because you become the best version of them and not yourself. And that, like I learned that early as a you know as a as a as I guess as a business owner. Right, time's ticking, so we're gonna wh- whittle through there. So my man's come back with some more debt. So um, often, often find it odd how I can speak. And oh no, that's not it. Any nuggets for setting maintaining boundaries in personal life perspective? Um, that's more a question of being able to say no when I have people pleasing traits right. make sense yeah ads do you have you got any thoughts on that uh not so much from a people pleasing I think boundaries boundaries for me between work life and personal life yeah uh have a certain time when it's the end of the day finish that routine and go yeah. go you know like I mentioned you know get get it all out of your head and then go into the evening so you're yeah. you know you're you're there for your family so I, i've got you know i've got boundaries around that uh yeah. certainly i've i've put self-restricted social media boundaries on my phone so you know i get a warning at, at 30 minutes up I, I was doing an hour a day on both instagram and facebook that's two hours a day you know in the first few months of this year yeah. it was just a waste i enjoyed it but it was yeah. a waste of my time so i've reduced that down to 30 minutes right uh, so yeah, yeah. And sometimes I feel like I'm missing out on things that I wouldn't know if I hadn't <laughs> looked on there. But yeah. it's, there's more important things to do with my time. So yeah, ba- boundaries from me in that that respect. Limit. I think there's one, if, if it's all right for me to mention, was about like around the dating element. And we we made the decision to say, we're not going to get involved in dating at the minute so that you can focus on building your training, right? So for me, that's a barrier. And before anyone's listening to me telling ads how to live it, love it, Livy's love life there is like it's not that it's that like ads is going through a really it's going to go through an intensive six months where he's going he's got to make this work and this turns to this trading so having a love interest is not going to be right right now because he's so consumed in it and we have to be 100% focused and then obviously when he's rolling in it he can then pick up women and like and pick him up in their Rolls Royce and take him off right so it's like that is a barrier okay that's almost saying no I don't have the time or the energy to put into a relationship, but because I've got to build this career. And that's a really big move. That's a big decision that is like dropping the ego. That's knowing what the focus and the priority is right now in his life. And then actually once that has kind of settled down and we've got to grips with it and we're doing, we're making regular money, then it's a case of you're going to be in a better place to date. Right. So that's kind of like a, that's a strategy of, of saying no. Um, anyone else got anything to add on that? Other? When it comes to boundaries in relationships, you know, I think just hearing the question as it was presented, it's like what you're saying, what are you saying no to? And then yeah. having like, I'm a, I'm a lot bigger now. I'm trying really hard to be a lot bigger on empathy. So just trying to think about like the other person's position, why they might be asking what they're asking or acting the way they're acting, behaving the way they're behaving. And then just sort of putting myself in their shoes and thinking, okay, so what's behind that? And then just being a bit rational about it. You know, when I was on holiday, my kids were running a mock. They were like, can we do this? Can we do that? And it was basically, Dad, can you put your hand in your pocket? Dad, can you put your hand in your pocket? And eventually I had to say, kids, you're acting like spoiled brats. You know, you know you've know, you been on that 25 times. You know, oh, oh. yeah, <laughs> you just have a beer in peace. That was the other thing. My oldest son, you know, he, he wanted, he, all, I, what I learned about him on holiday is he always wants to be doing something. He can't sit still. He's got ants in his pants. But he was always asking me, like, oh, can we go on the sides? Dad, do you want to play table tennis? And I was like, son, if you just give me 15 minutes to finish listening to this podcast or listening to this mix that I've done or whatever, 
yeah, yeah definitely but you've, you've you know it's just like balance i think is really really important but then, and that is boundaries because yeah you know you're on holiday as well so i think it's a it's a valid point you're not listening to the self-mastery course in a minute are you i have yeah i am listening to it at the moment because that is one of the things that we pillars isn't it it's understanding empathy self-empathy yeah. and other people so it's interesting you're saying that and you've yeah. listened to it. cool right how do you manage uh, any bad habits can you give any examples of how you recognize a trigger and have a plan combat and have a plan to combat that bad habit so we're going to wrap up here and each one of you are going to talk about a bad habit how you manage it um and move on from that so let's go um let's go andrew um bad habit generally for me is the, the making excuses for for not exercising um, and, I, and I, if I put it in my AM accountability and my my daily planning, I feel compelled that that I have to do it, you know. And if I don't do it, somebody's going to pick me up on it. Yeah. And I don't want to be called out by the big man. <laughs> okay, good stuff. All right, um, uh, let's go ads. Uh, bad habit, I guess. For me, first three months of the year, I had goals of uh, getting fitter, losing weight but they were kind of, I never really put the focus into them. Uh, and, you know, from, from the second quarter, I planned out my nutrition the week before. So now, I, you know, I order my shopping on a Wednesday for the following week. I already know what I'm going to have. I plan everything in my fitness pal. So I've broken that habit of just deciding to eat whatever's in the cupboards. I know what I'm going to eat. And health and fitness has got a lot better in this second quarter. I'm down like eight kilos uh, right. in the last 10 weeks. I yeah. uh, feel like I'm getting into a routine. So I feel like I've broken that bad habit of just eating whatever's in the cupboard. Or And I, yeah. I don't go to the shops anymore. I order it online so I'm not distracted by the special <laughs> offers at the end of the aisle or any of that stuff. I know what I'm going to eat. So, yeah, that's my stopping that bad habit and moving on to something Good. more nutritional. Yeah. And that's incredible results as well, especially after those first three months when we had that, like, the opening about it. And you're like, fuck, you know, like, and then you just took it on, didn't you, from Barcelona in terms of, like, that was a big game changer for you. Yeah. Um, okay. Lastly, Danny? Uh, I would, you know, this I've got quite a few bad events or have had. One of them used to be procrastinating and just going, oh, fuck it, I'll do that tomorrow. Um, whereas now it's much more about the accountability. I love the accountability because I say I'm going to do it in the morning and by the end of the day, I need, I need to have it done. Otherwise, you know, there's the red X in WhatsApp and it just, it sticks out like a sore thumb amidst all the green ticks. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to be that guy. So I think accountability for me, it just, it's changed, it's changed so much for me in, in yeah. so many different areas, but definitely with that one. 100%. And like I jump in with the top 1% guys to do it as well with them. And I actually quite look forward to doing a review. What I've built up is like, because we don't do that in the program we're in, but I started doing it with the guys and it took me three months to actually get into the habit of doing it. I did it myself, but there are time barriers, right? Where you've got to do it in and amongst, um, in amongst those time. Otherwise, you know, you're going to get the big fat red cross or you're going to get the L and like, especially in the top 1%, if you're, if you get the L or the cross, you're in fucking trouble. Mm -hmm. And like, if you're in the elite squad and you're doing it, you just get a little pep talk. And then if it happens again, then it's like, right, we just need to catch up. So accountability is brilliant. Um, cool. So guys, personally for me, thank you so much for coming on here, guys, anyone that's watching this and you're kind of looking at these guys and what they've become. I'm very much the same as, um, I've always been is that if you like what you see here, guys, and you like the way that these guys are operating, then I think we've got like four or five places left to come and join them on this group. You know, you either do it or you don't do it and you go off and live the life you want to or you come on our board and we find that life that you want to sort of project to. And I think these three guys are really great examples. That I mean, there's I could literally pull out loads and loads of guys who are equally on the journey. Um, and it just so happens that I've been in contact with these guys recently quite a lot and going through their journeys. And I thought that they would be a great insight into what it takes, the hardships. And you'll all admit, right, there's still more work to do. There's still the bad days. There's still times yeah. when we don't reach the top pinnacle. That is the beauty of this journey is that it doesn't stop until we die and we're on a process and we're on a journey, we're on a mission and it's, it evolves every three months. We evolve every three months. And when we look at ourselves, hopefully this has been a really good reflection for yourself to go, actually, like, 
done pretty well. I'm like, you know, you're a blue belt on the mats <laughs> rather than the white belt, you know. So um, last piece of advice from each of you that you want to give to the guys to go away and help them on their journey. Danny. Put me on the spot. Last piece of advice I want to give um, to people. Okay. I would say, and I, I'm going to use a Jamesism here, but you have to look at the man in the mirror. You know, you've got to understand that you need to be able to self-reflect um, and identify the areas that you want to improve. That's it. Perfect. Uh, adds. I would say invest in yourself. You know, it's one of the best things that I've done and it's propelled me forward uh, much more than if I'd have tried to go it alone. So, yeah, invest in yourself. Good man. Thank you. Uh, and Andrew? Yeah, I, I I echo that. And, you know, if you're serious about changing yourself for, for the better, for your family, for your business, for your children, whatever, then just just give it a go. You know, it, it's not like you're, you're, you're making a lifetime commitment for, you know, if, if it doesn't work for you, but you have to put the effort in. You have to. Yeah, you have to meet us halfway. Meet, meet you halfway. Meet you halfway and show the fuck up. 1% a day. That's it. <laughs> little nuggets, little nuggets. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I'll drop you a voice note after this. Um, and thank you to everyone watching. Um, what, what the guys will be able to do is come back and, three, uh, and see any of the comments. We're going to put this on the podcast as well so you can listen back. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you so much, boys. I really appreciate you guys and your time. Um, yes. We're going to sort you out some brand new Remember the Mission t-shirts for doing that. So I'll make sure that the guys get in touch to get your sizes and get them ordered to you. So thank you. Appreciate yes. it. Thanks, Lovely. guys. Thanks, See you guys. Bye.